Hey guys, this is Camfree15. I am back at it with another video for you guys. And it's been a while since I talked to Clippers on the channel, but I needed a break about from these guys. I really did. But I'm back talking about the Clippers. And we got a W against the Chicago Bulls, which I would say was much very less, I would say, stressful as the last game we played that team. But um, we got the job done. We got our second straight win in the went on the road. We go back home to play the same Cleveland Cavaliers who we played last week where Paul George went off. Hopefully, Paul George is able to come back for that game, but I don't think he will. Again, let Paul George rest as much as he needs to till, I guess, the swelling goes down. Um, but, yeah, um, that's kind of a thing I wanted to say as well as the fact that, hey, the Clippers, they're doing good because especially after the last two losses against the Celtics and against the Kings that I personally did not like. The Celtics game, I still, to this day, I even have a Celtic friend who's a Celtics fan. I still say to my grave, if Kawhi Leonard holds onto that ball and doesn't try to rush the ball, we probably win that game. The Kings game, I don't know what happened there. Um, I barely watched that game, to be honest, but I do remember how bad we kind of played that game. And... The Timberwolves game to an extent in that first half was god awful. And then they totally flipped the switch in that freaking second half, which got us the W against the Timberwolves. Here was kind of an all out, you know, nice team win. You know, we struggled in the middle parts of the game um, when the Bulls were trying to take the lead and everything, but we stood firm, we stood firm and we didn't allow the Bulls to get any confidence, which I love the fact that the Clippers, they played much, and I mean much better defense against the Chicago Bulls this time as opposed to last time we played them in L.A. I guess you could probably blame the fact that it's one of them stupid 12 a.m. games. I mean, 12, yeah, 12 p.m. games they always handle us. I can't wait till we get our new, sta new stadium so we can stop that. But, um... Yeah, um, for one, you know, Zach Levine wasn't a freaking pest like he was in that first game. If I'm going to look up the stats, Zach Levine, he only had 26 points, which I was praying and I made a tweet saying, hopefully we can hold Zach Levine to maybe 30 at least compared to almost damn near 50. And guess what? We only held him to 26 points. And I say that's a W because, man, I was really afraid if Zach Levine gets going and he starts hitting freaking three-point shots like he was hitting against Los Angeles, which he's not a good three-point shooter. He's a much improved player and a much improved three-point shooter, but he's not, like, a world beater from three. He usually beats you from the paint. And I'm glad that the Clippers, Ty Lue, they made the adjustment from the first matchup to essentially just send defenders at him and made sure he got nothing. Um... Kobe White only at 17. I thought Kobe White, especially to start off the game, I thought he was going to be the guy that was going to kill us all game. But he only we only held him to 17 points. Um, Patrick Williams, who in the first game actually put a lot of work in, we only held him to three points. <laughs> I'll take it. Good. He's a rookie. Even though he has been playing really good. Um, Gafford, who was, Jesus, he looked terrible tonight. Um, he had two points. Um, Garrett Temple, who some Clipper fans thought, that he would be our Clipper killer because it isn't a Clipper game if a former Clipper player just comes up and kills us. He only had 10 points. He didn't really do anything. Um, Sadoransky had 17 off the bench. Valentine had 10 off the bench. Um, Thaddeus Young had 14 points off the bench. Overall, um, the Bulls, they just, I've, the Bulls just didn't have enough. You know, they just weren't scoring the ball efficiently like they did in that first game. We play them to hang in there with the Clippers, personally. Um, again, they're a talented team. They definitely got things to, you know, work out. But also remember, we we didn't play. They they didn't play Markinen and freaking um, and Wendell Carter Jr. I don't know what's going on with Markinen. I know my dad's a Bulls fan, but I don't know. We would know much about that. What's going on with that? And then um, what is it? Um, we obviously know Wendell Carter Jr. The one thing about that guy I know is he cannot, you know, stay healthy. Um, anyways, speaking about the Clippers, Batum had seven points off the bench. They were, they were a good serviceable seven. Um, he, he, again, there's nothing else I got to say about Batum, even though he didn't really do much of anything. He had six rebounds and had one three and went two for four. Kawhi Leonard, who's been killing it since the Timberwolves game, which I need Kawhi Leonard to do this, have these type of performances going forward till Paul George comes back. 
you saw in the two games where we lost to the Celtics and the Kings, Kawhi Leonard just had around 20 points or something like that. He can't have that. He can't have that. And yes, other guys are going to have to step up in the absence of Paul George. But Kawhi Leonard needs to take ownership of himself to be like, okay, I'm the guy. I need to drop 30 points so I can lead my team to victory and stuff like that, which will only inspire the other guys to go out there and get theirs. So he dropped another 33 points. Again, much needed. We need that also, you know, Sunday um, when we play the Cavs. When we play when we play the Cavs, we got to frick. Kawhi's got to have a 30 point game you know, and stuff like that. Again, there's other factors that are going to lead into that game, but yeah. Um, Serge Ibaka, he only had nine points. Um, again, speaking about Kawhi Leonard and Serge Ibaka, we had a slight little scare. Like, at one point, Kawhi Leonard went out with a hand injury. Then Serge Ibaka, only a few plays later, um, or a few minutes later, goes out with, like, a tweaked knee. And I'm like, dude, we lost Paul George, and now you're telling me we're losing Kawhi Leonard and potentially Serge Ibaka now? But luckily, they came back and they played. Um, I don't know what... Why well, Serge Ibaka didn't close out, but then again, that closing out lineup to close the game was really, you know, doing its job. So there was no point in playing him. He only had nine points. I only had one, three, four, and nine. I thought he would have like a good, really breakout game, but he really kind of didn't do much of anything. But hey, he was there. Patrick Beverly, who I can finally stop complaining. Let me just say this for Patrick Beverly's sake: Can though, for the for the love of God, can this guy just stay healthy going forward the rest of the year? Please do not get hurt. Another thing I need to have an issue with, I need to maybe, I don't know, if the Clippers would like me to go to their training staff to, I don't know, interview them and tell them to their faces what the hell is a sore knee injury, then that'd be much needed because that man was out eight straight games with a sore knee. I better not be hearing stuff with sore knees from this guy again. Because if he really has a sore knee, I need to see the evidence. I don't need to see him warming up looking like he's spry as ever. Um, Patrick Beverly, you know, he only had six points. He didn't really do much, but again, he's a much needed player on the defensive side of the ball that we need. And you can clearly see that he's definitely needed. You know, he's one of the main reasons why Zach Levine didn't get going. Reggie Jackson, who I guess hasn't been playing good as of late, but he had, I guess I would say a solid outing, 11 points, four assists, one rebound, five of 11 from the field. Um, Roger Jackson, so far, I guess you can say he's playing, I would say, respectable. He hasn't been playing good as of late, but he's playing respectable, I might say. Right now, the only player who I'm looking on the freaking rotation that's on the doghouse, apparently, is Luke Kennard. We'll get to Luke Kennard in a second, guys. Um, I still I, yeah, I have some choice words for that guy. Um, Marcus Morris Sr., at least he's playing. He's playing like a guy that's getting paid 64 mil. 20 points at six threes. I'll take it. Six from 10 from the field. Marcus Morris Sr., listen, I'll take it. He may sting up the joint, but I know he's going to hit you some threes occasionally, and he'll get you around 10 points. And I like what I'm getting out of Marcus Morris Sr. Coming off the bench, he's very, and I mean a very good piece, especially if he's hitting shots, you know, especially next to Lou Williams, who has been killing it the last two games, um, which I'll talk about. Lou Williams that Flurry, when he scored, st- scored like 12 straight points, was freaking amazing. He essentially shut the door on the Bulls trying to get themselves back in the game. Like, it was a close-knit game, but Ty, not Ty Lue, um, Lou Williams said, uh-uh, you're not getting back in this game. And he essentially took the game over with Kawhi out on the bench, which, again, to the Bulls, you know, mistake is they had to win those non-Kawhi minutes. They didn't win those non-Kawhi minutes because <laughs> none of those guys could guard Lou Williams. Like, they were putting everybody on Lou Williams, and he was just getting past them, laying the ball up. So Lou Williams continues his excellent play, especially from the last game. So hopefully, you know, he keeps it up, especially with Paul George out. Because if he plays like this with Paul George back in the lineup, again, do I say our team is very much slept on? Slept on? Another thing I got to say, too, can somebody beat the Utah Jazz, please? I guess we're going to have to do it if we freaking play them, because we played them in a few games. Ivica Zubak, even though he had 15 minutes because he got into foul trouble, he was still serviceable. Again, another good, you know, game by Zubak. I know not a lot of people are high on him, but I'm still one of I'm still one of the few guys that are high on him. Um, he had 12 points, uh, four rebounds, one assist, um, and he went five from six from the field. Again, you know, Zubak, 
he's playing with a guy that I expect him to have confidence. And, you know, the more you see him start to freaking get into a role, he's really going to freaking do good. Terrence Mann, you know, he's not scoring the ball and uh, efficiently, but he is really, and I mean really freaking working hard out there. And what I mean by he's working hard out there is he's hustling, he's doing all the right things, he's stealing the ball, he's earning minutes. He's earning those minutes. And I swear, if this dude gets some semblance of a jump shot, I'm not saying he's going to be an all-star point guard, but he can be on the way. He will definitely be, you know, a, a really good player for this Clipper team if this guy, if this kid can get a jump shot. Like, if he can get him jump shot where he can knock down threes, you know, knock down the mid-range shot he says he's been practicing on, dare I say, you know, he can become one of them sleeper steals the Clippers can look back and be like, you know what, you're nice, you're nice. That's good. I love what Terrence Mann is giving us. He played 33 minutes in this game. That's a testament to how good, how much he's impressing his coaching staff. He's doing, he's earning his minutes. He's earning his minutes, guys. And that's the one thing I like that Terrence Mann is doing. He's hustling. The one thing I took away from the Minnesota Timberwolves game is, yeah, he's not doing anything efficiently offensively for us. But the one thing when we were down big and it looked like we were going to probably get blown out, the only player I saw in that first half that was actually giving a damn and actually hustling out there was Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann was the one guy that's like, no, I'm not going to back down. I'm going to play hard from beginning to end. And he's earning his minutes. His defense is really freaking good. I think his defense is starting to become very underrated. And I think you can thank Patrick Beverly for helping him out on that aspect. I'm also, you know, Chauncey, Chauncey Billups, who's on the coaching staff, has really taken him under his wing too. Um, Terrence Mann, you know, even though his offensive presence isn't there, his defensive presence is felt. And I do like the fact that, you know, when he wants to get aggressive, he gets aggressive and he takes chances. He'll take some shots and he'll go to the he'll go to the rim and try to go get fouled. I like that. I love what I'm seeing out of Terrence Mann. If he continues to play this, he's earned a spot in the rotation. Now I don't know if he's going to get playoff minutes when the playoffs come, but if he keeps it up, Ty Lue will have to consider be like, well, if there's a chance where well, we might need to get a good stop, let's put Terrence Mann out there to get us a good stop um, and stuff like that. Now, let's talk about the last guy before I know up this video. Okay, I'm not going to scream. I'm not going to rant. I'm not, but I'm going to start doing that if this starts to keep up. I'm talking about our main man, Luke Kennard. I really don't know what the hell, what the F is going on with Luke Kennard. I, I seriously don't know. When I watch him, it's like, dude, you're such a very talented player. You have the skill traits, but why are you on this team and why are you bringing essentially the same production as Landry Shamit was giving us last year? In 18 minutes, this guy only scored three points. 18 minutes, he scored three points. I made a tweet back in the next game. And I think I said this in my next game recap, check it out. If you want to get my thoughts about Luke Kennard, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say, it, I said it before. I'm going to say it again. Luke Kennard, if he cannot get something going, if his confidence is, I don't know, shaky shot. I, I don't know. Um, you have guys like Reggie Jackson, even though he can upset you, He's still putting in 11 points, and he's being a serviceable player at least. Terrence Mann is being a serviceable player at least. You know, he barely got any play time. And you want to know what he's doing? He's taking advantage of his opportunities given to him. He's being aggressive. He's impressing the coaching staff. He's showing the coaching staff, hey, put me on the court. I'll try. You know, I can't score, but I'm going to put something on one end, and that's my defense. And when I want to go score, I'm going to be aggressive. Hold on a quick second, guys. I need to do something. Okay, back, uh, back to what I was saying about Luke Kennard. But he, Terrence Mann has taken advantage, advantages of his opportunities given. Even if it's five minutes, he's taken the most opportunity. Look at him. He literally got 33 minutes tonight because of how well he was playing on the defensive side of the ball. 
as well as how aggressive he's been on the offense side of the ball. Luke Kennard, he's just, you know, unless he's either wide open for three or he's in transition and sometimes whenever the few times he wants to pull up from three, um, other than that, he's not doing anything. Most of the time, I just see him just standing around doing nothing, not trying to create as much separation. Um, you know, I don't know if he's in, I guess, Ty Lue's doghouse or whatever, a coach's, a head coach's doghouse, but this is definitely not looking good. And now when you look at the fact that the Clippers extended him four years, 64 mil, the same amount, you know, Marcus Morris is getting paid. I'm expecting him to play like how Marcus Morris played, even if he's giving me 10 points, at least give it, make it a serviceable 10. Marcus Morris dropped 20 points, and he usually averages around 10 to sometimes even breakouts to 20 points. Okay, yes, we're getting our money paid for Marcus Morris. I've always said that Mar the Clippers had to pay Marcus Morris that money because it's either Marcus Morris or Jermichael Green. Luke Kennard, okay, we extended him because it seemed like we were going to expect big things from this kid. You know, listen, we're getting to a point where we're like a third way through the season. This is game 27 of 72. I'm not going to hold Luke Kennard's hand every now and then. Yeah, at first, if you checked out my earlier videos, um, which is not much, but still, it's like, I'm not going to give the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Luke Kennard. He's got to just be accustomed to this. But he's really not impressing. Like, dude, if you're getting 18 minutes and scoring three points, what's the point in you playing? I said it in my next game. Eventually, it's going to come to a point where Tyler's going to have to make a decision. Listen. I can't play the guy because he's not doing anything for me. We're trying to set up plays for him. He's not getting active. He's not taking the opportunities he's given to go out there and kill it. You know? Apparently, we heard from Detroit it was the same issues. He didn't have any confidence in himself. Um, Listen, the more he plays like this, age game, I'm sorry, but his confidence is shot. You're having a freaking third-year player, I believe that's Terrence Mann is. He's outplaying you. And he barely does anything on offense. But you want to know why? He's playing something on the defense. Luke Kennard, he's an offensive player that really his defense isn't there. So you think, okay, he can't play defense. He should give us something on the offensive side of the ball. And he gives us nothing. He gives us nothing. So I'm really crossing my fingers on Luke Kennard. You know, I've listened to podcasters, well, mostly the Locked On Clippers podcast. Um, they said his contract, you know, isn't tradable like this year, but if the Clippers feel like this isn't working, I just say cut him loose and get another player that wants to do some do something to actually be contribute make a contribute a, a contribution to the offense. Because otherwise than that, he's playing like Landry Shamit of last year, where Landry Shamit would be in there, but um, you know, when he takes his shots, he missed his shots and he wouldn't do anything and because he was in and out of the lineup, his confidence was shot. The same thing's happening here with Luke Kennard. The question with Luke Kennard is, is he going to step up and actually play better? You know, is he going to do stuff? You know, it looked like to start off the whole run without Paul George against the Southern game, it looked like, okay, that's this is Luke Kennard we're expecting to get. But then he has the last few games, he just hasn't done really much of anything. It's like, I, I'm really disappointed. I'm really disappointed. Again, I'm still going to believe in this kid. I really am. But at the end of the day, it's like eventually it's going to come to the point. It's like when you get later on in the season, if you're not seeing nothing, it's like, how can we give you playoff minutes? You know, I'd rather give Terrence Mann playoff minutes if he's going to be a contribution. I'd rather give Reggie Jackson, who's when he was in the playoffs last year, stunk up the joint and I wanted him benched. So, you know, Luke Kennard, he's going to have to step up his play. That's the only thing I can say, you know. Rebounding the ball and assisting the ball, which he didn't have a lot. He only had three rebounds and one assist. You know, playmaking, that ain't going to cut it. You're going to have to give us something on the opposite of the ball in terms of your points. I'm still going to believe in this guy. I'm not going to lose trust in this guy. But as the games, you know, go on and we get closer to the end of the year, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, again, you know, the Clippers, they feel like it's not working out, especially if they keep him for the, this entire year. They can trade him next year and be like, you know, let's get something about who, somebody more serviceable. It just, it just didn't work out, you know, just like the Landry Shamit thing. We all thought we were going to get a more improved Landry Shamit. It looks like we're getting so far what's equal to him. I'm sorry, three points in 18 minutes is embarrassing. He needs to do a better job. He needs to step up. But 
The Clippers get the W against the Chicago Bulls, which I would say, com- coming from last year's embarrassing loss against that team against that team last year, this is a much needed win against that team. You know, the only other freaking win I wish we could have was the Atlanta Hawks win, but I'm not going to count that because we had no Kawhi Leonard, no Paul George. We'll get those guys back the next time we play them. Trust and believe. Anyways, um, that's all I got to say for the Clippers. The Clippers have another solid win. We play the Cavs on Sunday. I don't know if I'm going to do a game recap on Sunday for Clippers Cavs. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but um, I'll, I'll think about that. But again, put in the comment section if you want that. I'll, I'll still do it if you guys want it, but that's all I got to say. But um, that's kind of it. So if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this Clippers W. Um, your thoughts on Kennard. Um, where do you think his confidence is at? Do you think he's in Ty Lue's doghouse? We don't know. Apparently, Ty Lue's talked to this guy, and I don't know if he's retaining what Ty Lue's trying to tell him to do. Again, I've said it before. Maybe the coaching staff might need to come up with some plays for him to get him open. Again, if he's taking opportunity of those chances, that's the real question. Because you're getting to the point, you just have players where he is wide open. Players are just not passing him because they're like, dude, we don't even know if you're going to hit the shot. But, um, yeah, um, that's the thing. Hit that subscribe button if you want to get more Clippers content, um, as well as any other content I put on the channel. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, I do – well, right now I'm doing gameplays of Fairy Tale the video game, which is one of my favorite animes, and Resident Evil, which I'm going to probably make a recording tonight, which I'm looking forward to. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, I'm a gaffer, so hopefully you guys enjoy this Clipper W. We can sleep peacefully tonight. Um, we don't have to be up in arms darn our pitchforks like we always do. Um, so, yeah. So, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day or night or whenever you're checking out this video. Until then, guys, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.